Hello. Hello, everyone. And welcome to the Oxford School of Drama Foundation course q and um, I'm Louise Kokotaney, who does all the marketing and comms um, for the school. And I'm just going to go around and say who else is with us. So we've got Juliet, um, who's head of um, the foundation course and is also on the audition panel. And we've got Ayana and Max. And they're currently um, year two students, but they also studied on the foundation course. Um, so they're gonna, we're all gonna help answer your questions. So um, what you should see is there is a live Q and A. And if you have any questions, it would be great for you to type them into the live Q and A, not, not, the, not the chat, because then it's much easier to see. Um, and then we'll be able to answer your questions. If you have a like an admissions or a finance or an international student question, Catherine, who's also on the call but can't be seen, will actually answer those for you. She'll type you an answer. If you've previously asked that question when you registered, um, Catherine will either have done so or will be sending you an email about it. OK, so um, let's begin. We've actually got some questions already that some of you answered in the registration. And the first question is, how is the course structured? What practitioners do you cover? What is the timetable and contact hours? I think that's for you, Juliet. Okay, all right. So um, we have a variety of different tutors each year. So some tutors come just for a certain year, and then some are there regularly. So the content changes a little, um, but in general, we're going to be exploring things like devising, um, language, improvisation, um, uh, sometimes stage combat. There are animal studies, movements. So there's, there is quite an array of uh, film, uh, lots of different things that are part of it. Um, I wonder if one of you wants to talk about maybe a typical day might help them. Max, do you want to give us the kind of your, your day structure or something? Throw me straight in the deep end, Juliet. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's 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 a busy day. Um, so they, I mean, so I did the foundation, um, as Lee said, uh, me and Ayana in second year. So um, did foundation from 2019 to 2020. Um, and I know that the foundation sort of molds um, sort of different for, for each different year group. Um, but for me, so the typical day was, um, get to school on the school bus um, just before 9.15. And um, then it's sort of 15 minutes of body conditioning in the, in the morning. So using that time to A, land in the space and, and arrive at the school and, and stretch out a little bit um, and get yourself ready. Um, and then uh, an hour and 45 session followed by a 15 minute break and then another hour and 45 session um, until quarter past one. Um, and you have 45 minute lunch break and then two more um, hour and a half, hour and 45 sessions in the afternoon and finish the day at 5.30. Um, so it's a long day um, and definitely takes a bit of getting used to um, when you first start, especially, I mean, I came from a gap year um, and then went into it. And so it was a bit of getting used to coming back into it, into a rhythm. Um, but it's nice because you've got time to really focus in on things and and so for example in in a film class and um, which is a big popular um during the foundation and um, but really sort of a lot of time to get used to, to being on camera um or, or things like that so yeah i hope that answers the question okay yeah and then so in terms of the different practitioners um it, and the different so we would be someone would be using say lecoq and laban within movements someone might be using um, Stanislavski, but but really because we have um, that there's an exciting element to the course which is new people come in and teach on it um, and therefore bring whatever influences they have um, and so I really like to work with the tutors that we have and bring out what they're excited to teach and so someone may um, so last year had someone who's uh, translates in Russian and there's into uh, Chekhov and so she would work with, with Chekhov um, we have someone who uh, has their own devising company, um, and so therefore we've been using them to explore devising. They've devised their own um, version of uh, different Shakespeare plays, so we've had a go at that with the students. So there's that kind of 
element which I find quite exciting every year, which is working with tutors who are really excited to explore new projects and explore their work. There is, obviously we do cover the standard different things all the time as well. Um, and there are people like myself, so um, you've also got those of us who teach on the main courses. So you're very well integrated kind of into the school. So, you know, you might have someone uh, teaching you some, some acting or some language and Shakespeare, and then you may in the evening end up going and seeing something that they've been directing another year group in. Um, so it, I can't give you a very simple answer because the exciting thing about it is that it grows and changes the different influences. Um, but the content is pretty much, you know, it's pretty much the same, but I like to make it very much linked with the tutor's expertise and interests as well. Um, was there a second part to that question? Uh, I felt like there was three bits. I might have missed a bit. We, we just need to hear you. About the contact um, hours yeah. and the timetable. Okay. So maybe the day is like, it is like a full-time job, isn't it? Yeah, These so it is all, it's all day um, and it's for the, for the six months. Um, and then the, the, the change comes in your week 11s where it becomes more towards a presentation. The timetable is a bit more fluid. Uh, we're creating, taking things from different classes, uh, creating something for a presentation. Did you want to add anything, Ayana? <laughs> <laughs> very, very similar to what Max said. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Thanks. Um, so the next question is, do I need to have acting experience to study here? So uh, I would say no, um, there's, a, there's a lot of things. I, I guess you could ask that about, do I need this to study here? Do I need this? Do I need this? Do I need this? Possibly the answer to all of those uh, would be no. <laughs> um, like as in kind of, I need a certain, um, you know, a certain qualification and all these types of things. Um, there are things that you do need. What do you, shall I fill out to this? students or I can say what do you think you need to go on a foundation course what do you think um a willingness to um do it <laughs> I think that's the main thing just being super open to learning and open to um other people's interpretations of things and not and not going in um I guess with your ego so that we not having an ego when you come to school is always a good thing. Well, yeah, that's true. You can, <laughs> you can come with one, it's fine. <laughs> it's just, you're gonna get your edges knocked off a little and you're gonna have to soften, you're gonna have to open. Um, so an, an energy and a inquisitiveness and creativity um, are what I would say you need. Can I, can I add to that as well? Um, I suppose like a, a, a question as to what you want out of the course as well, um, because everybody's got something different from the course. Um, everybody gets like gets something different from the course. Um, and I know that when I started, I wasn't 100% sure whether I wanted to train for three years. Um, I didn't understand why you needed to train for three years as an actor. Um, and so when I started, I sort of came with a thing being like, well, I'm intrigued to whether this day is what I want to do. Um, and B, how valuable actually is the drama school training? Um, and after two weeks I was there, after two weeks I was like, okay, well, this is, uh, clearly I love it. Um, and I didn't really need to delve in deeper and all that. I think three years isn't quite enough. <laughs> but um, yes, yeah, so I think coming with coming with a question and, and like Juliet said, sort of being inquisitive and, and curious, I don't think you need to come saying, oh, I've never acted before. Um, and and that be a problem because it's it's also about the people that you share the experience with. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so um, we've got a couple of questions that are kind of quite similar. So it's basically um, people asking about the age range of students. Um, so, so sort of what kind of age range? Some people here say they might be in their fifties. Are they too old to audition for the foundation course? Um, so over to you, Juliet. Okay, so what I would say, one of the things that I love about the foundation course is the, the mix in the groups. And so that could be a mix, 
like linked with ages and backgrounds, experience, all those types of things. And actually through that mix, that really helps each individual grow, as I said, get the edges knocked off them. Um, so I'm really up for that, that type of mix. So we do have people kind of been, who've been doing a different career of some kind, or they, have, they, they stop and then they kind of come on a foundation course. So that people in those types of situations. Um, currently, I think we just got someone in their thirties is probably the oldest at currently um, this year. So there is a variety of ages. I would say that if you are in your 50s, then that's great. And, I, and we'd love to be working with you. You need to be open and flexible and up for what you can learn from those who are different ages and different backgrounds. So as long as there's that, that openness, um, does, that, does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, I mean, officially, there's no upper age limit for any of our courses, are there? Because it's, it's yeah. done on audition and workshop. So thank you very much. Um, and the, the, the next question is, what special qualities does the Oxford School of Drama look for in a student? And does the Oxford School of Drama Foundation course prepare students for working in acting? There's kind of two questions. So if we take the first time, what kind of qualities does the Oxford School of Drama look for in a student? Um, so I guess that's me answering that because I'm on the audition panel. <laughs> um, so I would say somebody who is kind of very, is kind of honest, happy to be themselves, have not, not, putting on too much of a front. Um, somebody who, as we work with you, you're able to start to find a kind of honesty and a, a truth in what you're doing. Um, that's not always there straight away. It may be through exercises as we work with you, but that, that type of thing. I would say that with the foundation course, energy, I mean, we do have people who have a low, you can be low energy, you can be shy, you can have all these different things, but you need to also be up for growing in that and um, being able to um, yeah, use, use your energy and funnel your energy in the, in the right way. Um, so yeah, so those are some of the things that I would find attractive. Also, I guess it's, there's uniqueness, you know, like I, I, I get excited just with just who you are. Like in, in an audition, it's great just to feel that someone is being themselves, that we're getting a sense of who they are and that we can work with you as a, as a person rather than I come with this skill. I come with this, uh, this thing that I'm holding on to that I have learned that is very important and I'm going to show you what I can do. Does that make sense? We often like in the audience to kind of, you know, push that aside a little um, and try and uh, get a little bit more to, to you and working with you and helping you grow in yourself um, in, within the drama and within the course. Um, is there anything you want to add you to? Because I guess that's from audition panel, but you from your experience of the people you've been around at the school. Yeah, I think one thing that like really struck me what you said is just being yourself and being not having not putting on that front and not feeling like like there isn't a type of person in a way that you have to be to come to this school. It is very much of like if you're showing your honesty, if you're sh if you're open to change, and also I think. You, you don't have to be the perfect picture at the audition. You, you're there, we're, look, we're looking for a lot, I don't work here. But, you know, <laughs> um, but I think the one thing that I've noticed is the school is looking for someone who is open to being changed or open, open to being like mixing with other people and um, is trainable. So it's not, you're not looking for the perfect picture, looking for more someone who's up for the challenge up for taking risks and being bold but yeah thank you and the second part of the question yeah the second part was 
does the Oxford School of Drama Foundation course prepare students for working in acting? We've also got another question I've noticed in the Q&A, which is very similar. It says, will the foundation course provide you with the amount of skills and knowledge to become an actor and actress? So they're very similar. Um, do either of you want to take that or I can? I'm, I'm happy to respond to that. Um, I think it, it definitely does give you, give you skills um, to, to become an actor or an actress. Um, and I think that something is that people, it, it'll give you a clear idea maybe of, of what path you want to follow. Um, I know that somebody asked about like, do you have to go into drama school afterwards or, or can you go into university? Like people from my foundation, you're like, well, I've learned a lot from that. Also like you learn a lot about other people and how to work with other people um, and, and working in a group because you spend so much time within a group. So some people decided actually, I don't want to go to drama school. I'd like to go to university and carry on acting at university and then maybe they'll go somewhere after that. And some people have gone straight into the industry. Um, and like, I don't know, me personally, I wanted to delve, delve deeper into, into um, the training itself. And so I'm somebody that needs a little bit of direction um, in terms of, of, I don't think I would have been able, to, I was ready after the foundation to go straight into the industry. Um, but that was just me. But I know people that have done that. Um, and for me, it was, I want to build, build my skills further before facing the wider world. Um, yeah, but I think it definitely does. And, and you'll have an idea a little bit as well, how it will feel for you when you come towards the end of the foundation. Yeah, I would say that whilst you're here, you get a sense, you get a sense of what it's like to be at drama school, what it is for you. And there's no, we can't say, you can't go straight into the industry, you can't go here, you can't, you, it, you are an individual and you take the training and you'll see what will happen next. I'd say the majority would, if they're going into acting, would go on to further training after the foundation, but it's, it really depends on who you are and who you were before you came and all those types of things. Ayana? Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. Um, just with the idea of the training of the foundation, um, it isn't purely to get people into drama school. And what I really appreciated it from appreciated from it was that I was given these tools to then be proactive in my own self um, of how to approach text, how to approach working with people like Max said and all those things. So you yourself become wiser, I guess, in being proactive and, and doing those things and working out what works for which piece um, rather than this is how to do this and this is how to do that. And you take from, but yeah, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> That's great. And actually, there's another question which is very similar. So I think we can just confirm that. It said, would this course be suitable for people planning to go on to university but who are very interested in acting? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I have somebody who is do on the course right now, and next week she's got to go in the little room and do her interview for Cambridge. Um, so that's there is that going on for people um, and, and also what I like about the course is it's like a kind of it's like a launch pad into a new season for most people that come on it in whatever sense so it could be from school the university it could be from the the job you've given up on you're like what am I doing in my life and then you're exploring here and then you're launching so it's like this kind of launch pad time it's a very exciting time to be working with people but through it, you get a good chance to kind of reflect on what on what you want and um, and what you might be able to to do next. Thank you. Um, and then um, the next question we've got is about the singing. Um, it says in the singing section, what style of music is it? Is it just musical theatre, or does the course cover a wider range of genres? Okay, so. Often the, the music that's used, so you will have music, but just in one of the terms, um, usually, um, is treated like a bit like a monologue. Um, so it's a, it is a, a piece, so it could be from musical theatre. Um, sometimes it's pop songs. This year they've been playing around with some folk songs from from their different backgrounds. So there is a bit of a variety, and really the tutor is um, trying to use things that 
help that move different individual students on. So I think that yes, there is a there is a, a range. Do either of you, what did what did you sing on your foundation course? Yeah. Well, when we were in foundation, everyone did some time. Ah, <laughs> it's changed okay. since because I know last year um, people could pick between. Um, a jazz song or a folk song and then the tutor would like suggest which ones they thought would be useful for like emotional connection um, and then I know we, even though we only did musical theatre uh, like solo pieces I guess um, the group pieces were somewhere I think something was in Latin um, so there was like lots of different it's like folky jazz music yeah. theater, so yeah. it's um, we had a who rock opera song that we sang um God. <laughs> if anybody knows it um but yeah i think it's also yes yeah, acting i think take it with the singing it's more acting through song so if singing something that does worry you um it's it's not a like i'm i get nervous singing in front of people um i've got a song to perform next week which would be good fun um but um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um it's acting through song so it's not um you have to stand up and stand still and and just try and sing in front of everybody else and the tutors are very very responsive to especially with singing as well because it's such a, a sort of it's such, such a daunting thing to do that they're very responsive and 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 they will have seen loads of people um go through similar things that you would be doing if if it's something that worries you so um, I really enjoyed the process um, and it made me a little bit more confident with singing and um, now I can't shut up, so. Thank you very much. Um, so a bit of a practical um, question. Would this course be affected by COVID-19? I mean, maybe we just have a quick chat about what we've done, you know, over the last year. Yes, yeah, so um, we've, We've worked extremely hard through COVID-19, as I'm sure many other people have. Um, but our passion was to, um, to, to work with the students. So last year, um, the foundation got shifted. It was shifted by three months. It started in January instead. Um, we did kind of online things to keep in touch with people. We then did kind of online two week thing. So we did what we felt was beneficial and would really help people online, but we didn't, we didn't sacrifice stuff to doing online that we felt we couldn't. Um, so we actually created a long days till late, um, very different kind of timetable to get loads of face to face hours in with our students. Um, and we also hired massive village halls and so we could spread ourselves out and so we went to great lengths to um yeah to to be together and be to creative together um and there's something quite thrilling to just know you're like in this hall in the middle of in the middle of nowhere doing being creative and artistic and you've made it happen when everybody else has shut down and is delivering three things online or so we, we were quite, um, no, we're gonna do it. So um, how things, like at the moment, it's not impacting the delivery of our course. Currently, it's very much back to normal. Um, we have shown that we can flex our muscles in order to adapt. So um, if that has to happen again, or versions of that, um, then, that's, then that's what we'll do. Yeah, I think, I think like we've um, like me and Ayana, we've been at a real privilege in terms of I know like other schools, other first years when we were in first years, so we were in first year last year, and it was obviously quite affected by COVID. Um, but the school really maximised our our like on site hours, um, which was something that meant a lot to all of us. Um, and it's the advantage of being in the countryside is that those spaces and halls as sort of village halls in the area they become freed up so that the school can spread out and people can still be um in person whereas if you're in in a big city then it struggles struggles a little bit more so um there's definitely a lot more freedom um when it comes to sort of covid restrictions here yeah i was going to say as well just to add on to that like in terms of having to wear masks and having to be le have less people on site 
the school I feel used that to the advantage, their advantage and not didn't see it as an obstacle, but rather used it to and mended the curriculum around it. So we do stuff um, with masks, like a movement piece with masks and like how they affected us or um, like in the first term we were split into two. So we essentially got double the amount of work. So we got more work done. Um, so it, it was, a, it was, I think personally, we were really lucky in that sense because we had, we got a lot done and using things creatively to your advantage rather than um, seeing it as an obstacle was like a huge thing that I learned with that, but yeah. And I, I personally, in my, my teaching, certain exercises, we'd suddenly all jump outside and we'd be in the field singing, so. <laughs> That's what I was going to add also, because there's outside space, people are able to rehearse outside as well, aren't they? Um, sort of around the actual building, which is- Especially nice weather. <laughs> Thank you very much. So the next question is, do you have any recommendations for places to find audition monologues? Um, yeah, I'm going to start with that one. Why? <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll just say really, really quickly, if you go on, if you want to apply and you go onto our website in the how to apply, um, you can click on and there's some suggested monologues there. Um, <clears throat> if you want to look at that first, but I'll hand you back to Max. Um, oh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, I think, well, with when it comes to classical I think Shakespeare's great. You should go for him, he's great. Um, <laughs> and in terms of contemporary monologues, I think my biggest advice would be just to read things or if you've watched something that you really like, then to look up the playwright to see if there's other things or to look up stories that excite you. Um, I think the main thing with choose, even choosing a monologue is to choose something that you relate to because at the end of the day as Juliet said like at the audition they want to see you and they want to see you come out so if you've got something you can relate to or something that um you are really passionate about then that will shine through and this they'll see you so um yeah just looking up your like the plays that your one of your favorite playwrights has written etc yeah. yeah I think yeah I think something that speaks to you um, is something that's very important. Um, and I think there are, um, I'd avoid the trap of just going best audition monologues instead of them because they will be seen <laughs> thousands of times. So I think just try and find plays um, to read and um, find sources on the internet where you can read plays. And just, again, I think go off playwrights and things like that. And I think when I auditioned for the foundation, I auditioned with a piece that I saw up at, I went to the Edinburgh Fringe the summer before, and so I saw a piece up there that I thought was uh, really beautiful. Although I did do my audition piece in an accent, um, and I would avoid that, and that's sort of a bit of a stay clear, stay clear of that, and focus on maybe what what you can bring to, to the work. Um, since we're on uh, just on this, rather than the actual content, something I would recommend that make that simplifies things is is choosing one where it's clear possibly who you're talking to um, and, and what you might want out of them. Because then you can imagine that person in the space and you can really try you know, to use yourself to affect them. That type of monologue, I would say, is going to be easier and easier to use yourself in and easier to show yourself. Something that makes it harder is um, talking to an audience. Um, so if you do have a piece which is talking to an audience, telling them a story or you know various things about what's been going on, and it just says audience and you've got no kind of context, um, I just recommend that you, you just shift it a little so that you feel like, right, I really know my relationship with this audience. Even just change it into a couple of people that you know really well. So it's like, okay, this is who I'm talking to. I really want, and the reason why I'm saying it, why am I telling this story? So if you can answer the questions of what you want through it and you change your audience to kind of be a more specific relationship, then you can play with that. But I would just say that that is slightly, it's slightly harder, okay? If you're looking for something that's simpler and that you can use yourself in. Okay, thank you very much. And um, 
<clears throat> the the next question is what skills would you take away with you from the college hmm. I, I think I presume that's relating to the foundation course so um I'm happy to start with that one um what skills would I take away from the college um I would really take away um communicative skills um from the foundation course and um, I touched on it earlier about learning what it is to work in a group um and because that's something that is very important between actors of being able to have a sort of communication between each other and 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 I think and like sometimes it sometimes it's positive sometimes it's negative and, and that's just, that's the way that things go um, but definitely communicative skills team skills um, I think um, definitely good team skills um, <laughs> part of the part of the Cleaning skills, yeah. Um, part of the course is because it's the school, it's a lot about community and, and, and looking after each other. And so once you're finished with the space in the day, make sure the space is ready for the next people tomorrow morning. And so a sense of, of um, yes, I'm very handy with a broom now. Um, <laughs> I hope that doesn't affect any of you all. Um, but um, yeah, so yeah, team uh, communication and, and acting. I mean, I wouldn't Otherwise, I would, so yeah, there are definite acting skills and, and knowing where my strengths and, and weaknesses probably are um, within maybe the roles that I can play in and, and yeah, and responding to direction. That's, that's one that I would definitely put in there um, because you workshop, well, when I did a foundation, there's a lot of sort of workshopping scenes with, with tutors and things like that, um, scenes, monologues. And I think that was a skill that I took from foundation is knowing how to respond to direction. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I think in not just in the foundation, but in any drama school training, or especially at the school, you you spend a lot of time with yourself as well and discovering things about yourself. Um, and so that's something that I think is it's just really important, not just in acting because you're being aware, but in real life, <laughs> that when you're interacting with others, with making new friends, like even those kind of personal skills, they come out quite a lot. Um, I was gonna say something else, but I forgot, but the direction thing was a big thing. And, oh yeah, um, I think, like I said earlier, the being able to be proactive with your skills, um, with the tools that you're given, and you're kind of given this little toolbox. And I think what the foundation does is it plants a little seed that you can start to water and grow and you know how to take care of it and you know how to further those skills or, and you might not know how to further some of them, but it's the discovery and the curiosity that you will carry on having that makes it so exciting. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> but I also add, like, I think building off this sort of seed analogy that I think there are things that, that sort of get planted in foundation and they're questions that I'm also answering now in, in second year where I'm like, oh, okay, that's that's what Juliet meant when when we were talking about this on foundation or or things like that. So they are it's it, it's not just the six month course. Um, it it does stay with you for longer. And also the people that I met, like we're we're a lot of us still in contact. Um, and and it's it's very unique. Um, I don't think there is. I mean, it sounds quite cliche, but I don't think there is a foundation course like it. Um, like in the country, just because of where the school is. And um, the size of the school, the people that come here, and um, yeah. Thank you, Max. Um, so the next question, I, th I think we've had one similar, but it um, says, what particular skills and knowledge do you do, do you provide, and what do you learn on the foundation course? So, um, um, well, we could talk about some of the topics, shall we? Um, so I teach auditioning, um, so I would help, I, I don't take a monologue that you're going to do for drama school and make you amazing at it, um, because I don't believe in that. I believe in helping you be able to do that yourself. So I'll try and miscast you in, uh, in monologues and explore um, you know, different elements of that, of how to approach a monologue. Um, and that's that then helps a, a lot of students as they choose. I also help people with um, ideas as to how to choose monologues. And so then they can choose monologues and go ahead and, and audition 
the, the drama schools if that's what they want to do. Um, so that's one of the one of the topics. Um, do you guys want to take another topic? Next. Yeah. <laughs> um, so topic or, or sort of subject. Um, yeah, I mean, so <laughs> improv, um, that's a really, really useful, useful thing to do on the foundation. Um, and we did it in five years as well, and I'm begging the school to give us some more this year. Um, because it's like the, yeah, again, the skills that you sort of gain in responding to things live and and understanding what what a room needs and what an audience audience needs straight straight there and then um, is something quite daunting but it's immensely valuable um, and I think and also in our foundation we delved um, we ended up covering a fair amount of Shakespeare actually as well um, so we covered a bit with Juliet in first time where we looked at um, uh, sonnets and then we looked at some two-handers as well um, and I can't remember if we did look at monologues or not. And then in the second time, we worked a bit um, on uh, getting a shake of the head from Juliet, so we didn't. Um, <laughs> in the second term, uh, we worked on, yeah, we sort of did a device project um, around the Tempest with the devising teacher, um, Jake, and we sort of pulled our own interpretations out. And I think that that was something incredibly valuable as well. Um, in terms of being able to look at a Shakespeare text, because as as young actors, it's something that's very very important because it's the cheapest production to put on. You don't have to pay any rights on Shakespeare, and um, so <laughs> that's what he told us. So, um, it's very very useful um, for, for going into the world. Okay. I, um... Um, yeah, in terms of um, I guess the pure subjects, um, we've got movement uh, in the foundation, which is more to do with how we use abstract concept, concept, concepts um, and turn them into um, people and stuff like that. And I guess it's the same with animal studies where we use animals and turn them into people. So I think um, the skill that that gives you is to bring yourself, I guess, away from your ha habits and stuff like that. Um, and then with voice, that's not singing, so don't be fooled, that's not singing. Um, that's more to um, get to know your voice, like get to know like how you sound, get to know how things feel rather than how, rather than how you sound, sorry, I should have said. Um, and then in terms of acting, like contemporary acting, um, we did quite a few scenes um, when I was on foundation. Uh, I don't know if that's still a thing, but I'm sure it is. <laughs> scenes, you think, wouldn't you? Um, but we did quite a few scenes from different playwrights. So I guess that's another way that um, some people found writers they liked um, and so went forward with um, getting audition monologues from those when they went on to audition after that. Yeah, um, yeah I think we could we can carry on, but you, there might be other other questions because obviously there's a whole syllabus, so there's lots of topics. That we yeah. Can... So and uh, so obviously it's a wide variety, and and it's it's quite similar, isn't it, to the actual three and one year courses? A lot of the tutors are the same that teach on those as well. Um, so the next question we've got is: Can you tell us an inspiring moment or section of work you experienced on the foundation course? I think that's for the students. Um, Who wants to go first, Matt? Yeah. So, oh, you want me to go first? Well, I, I can go first. I don't know when you go. <laughs> I need to think. Um, <laughs> I, uh, an inspiring, um, yeah, uh, animal studies. Animal studies for me. And um, being introduced to animal studies was something very interesting for me because it, it sort of, um, got me to think a little bit it just it provoked me i think um and so taking animals and using animals um and maybe their physicality or, or their inner tempo um and and using that and bringing that to a role um was something that i found very inspiring very interesting because it it sort of opened a doorway to me into that you can approach a role in many many different ways there's no there's no right or wrong in the way that you approach the role <laughs> Like bang, bang, bang! I've got to do this checklist, checklist, checklist. It changes, and um, there are parts that 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 work for you. And so, for me, for some projects, 
thinking about an animal works for me better and, and for others it doesn't quite serve what I'm doing but um, yeah that was something that really did inspire me. Can, can you tell us Max what animal you were that inspired you? Um, I, had, I had a few, the first one that I worked on was a duck um, so I was in my lab duck, I'm not sure you can see it, but, um, yeah, this duck still remains with me. Um, I'd worked on a duck for quite a while, and um, so the way that it was formatted was that we worked on one single animal for quite a while and then worked on the process of bringing that to, to the character. Um, and I've, yeah, every time I see a duck, I give them a little nod and say, I know what it's like, guys. Um, and I, work, I also worked on a gorilla um, for a bit and a magpie on foundation. So I worked on three animals, but the duck was the most in-depth one. Could, could you say which pieces you did? Are there any pieces that people would recognise? Um, in terms, so we, we workshopped a scene from Punk Rock um, by Simon Stevens, um, where we then played, so we had a, we had a boy, a sort of a male duologue, um, and we worked on Punk Rock by Simon Stevens, and we had, we played one character with one animal and then flipped. Um, and so with that same partner and switched. So then you've got both sides of the duologue and experience using two different um, animals. So I used uh, the gorilla for one and the um, magpie for the other character. Um, and then I think we also looked at monologue. I can't remember what I did as my monologue for that bit. That's fine. Um, Ayana, anything for you? Yeah, um, I think there's just so many things that I'm like, oh, which one do I pick? But I think, um, something that's really helped me and that's still helping me now, I think, is the work that we did on Shakespeare, because for me, I'd done Shakespeare at school, but I'd never done Shakespeare through acting. So I studied it in an academic um, atmosphere, I guess. Um, and just the techniques that we learn um, through the foundation course are same techniques that I've learned through first year. And I think now I'm not seeing them as techniques as such. And I guess that's what I was talking about earlier about planting the seed, like the seed was planted like two years ago. And now I'm starting to do those things without thinking about it and um, starting to, yeah, do the little activities that help me um, stay connected or do little activities that help me um, stay with the rhythm of Shakespeare, but like merge the two together. So it doesn't become robotic or not respecting the language as well. But yeah, that's something that really helped me. Thank you very much. Um, and what advice would you give to someone starting on the foundation course at Oxford? Questions. Um, I don't know. Yeah, ask yourself questions. Ask, ask the course questions. Um, ask. Yeah, I don't know. Ask those around you questions as well. Actually, um, I know that uh, on our on our foundation within our foundation group, we had a really good. Um, sort of atmosphere of asking each other questions about what, what we were experiencing, what we were struggling with, what we were enjoying, what we found um, more comfortable. Um, but questions, I think, are one of the most important things to learn from. If you don't ask questions, then how do you learn? Um, so that's something I definitely advise is when we start foundations, ask questions, um, yeah. Um, I would say um, know that the tutors are like, completely on your side <laughs> like we're, we're, the only reason what we're here is for you yeah like so just being quite quickly just knowing that so and try use us you know use us if you don't don't blend in and and worry and struggle and on your own just use the tutors come and tell us what's going on um because that's what we want we want to see you grow and blossom in what you're doing that's kind of the whole reason you're there um, and I do find that some students I don't know how but they don't quite get that they, they feel oh I'm, I'm here to to learn and do what they say and try and please and you know it's like no we're here actually to try and help you and um, so yeah make sure you use your student your, your tutors really well yeah um, I think for me it's only a short course it's only six months so to completely just go for it and to throw yourself in and to be really playful be bold and like take risks as well and the one thing that I'd say like even even with our training now is you're allowed to get it wrong 
get it wrong. Nothing's wrong, but you're allowed to make mistakes. You're allowed to, for things not to go to plan. And at drama school, and especially in the foundation, that's the safest place for you to get it wrong and to try the thing that you probably wouldn't try at an audition. Um, and, oh, there's something else. Again, I forgot. But fun. It, have fun. Have like, fun, yeah, have yeah. fun. <laughs> it's, it's not, I mean, not have fun as in um, take the piss all the time, it's have fun as in enjoy what you're doing um, because it's a luxury to have um, a space and a time where that it's set out where you can come and try things out and play around and, and, and enjoy yourself and do something that you love doing. Thank you. Um, there's a quick question here that I can answer, which is, do you run other shorter courses or summer schools if we're unsuccessful in getting a place on this one? Yes, we are starting to do that. There is one that starts next week online about audition technique. If you go to our website and look up the courses and go to shorter courses, all the information is there. And there, it's, it's about five to our online sessions with some of our tutors. Um, there's two on a, the contemporary monologue, there's two on the classical monologue, and there's one on how to do a self tape. So if you want to go and have a look at that, um, just Google Oxford School of Drama and our website will come up. Okay. Um, so the next question is, um, did anything surprise you about the school or your experiences? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go first, Diana. Um, I think, well, for me, I'm from, I grew up in a city and so I had a bit, and I, and I, I lived abroad, so I grew up not in the UK. And so when I came here, it was a huge culture shock that I was like in the middle of a field. And I kept laughing about it the other day because I, I walked to school most days and it's like a 35 minute walk, 40 minute walk through, through the forest. And I was like, if you told me two years ago that I'd be walking through a field with my wellies on to get to school, I would have laughed in your face. But I think over the time as well, like things always keep surprising me about the school or about living in Ox or living in this area as well, because I was like, oh, I'm not gonna enjoy it. Or I feel like the nightlife isn't for me or this isn't mine, but, I wasn't curious enough and I didn't discover it enough or to give it more of a chance, I guess. Um, not talking about the school, but more like around, like the area around. And I think as soon as I just spent a bit of time just being curious about it, I, I really love it. Um, not that I didn't love it before, but I love it even more now. Um, but I think as well, like the intimacy of being such a small cohort and such a small school, like everyone knows everyone, everyone's seen each other's face. Um, and the tutors all know us as well, like by name. So that's that's really nice. And I think I wasn't expecting that to be that close. Um, and just the fact that I'm, although I really wanted to be in the city and train in the city, um, I'm so, so happy and grateful that I chose to come here because it's, it's just such a different experience to what you'll get anywhere else because we're isolated from everyone else on the farm. But if you want the busy, you know, nightlife or busy um, time out of it, you can still, you know, London's only a train away, Oxford's still here. Um, and so, yeah, I just think it gives you, a, like the isolation gives you a real chance to be really specific and to focus like completely, which is really nice. Yeah. I mean, I should just add, obviously, this is about the foundation, but if you study the three year or the one year, you do your final term is spent in London, where you'll do a, a production to the public and also a showcase um, to invited industry audience. Um, but obviously the training, uh, the initial training takes place at the school. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot that, that surprised me, um, or there's always, always surprises. Um, I think something that surprised me was um, when I, when we were on foundation um, that there are a lot of, it was very easy to talk to um, the years above. Um, so talking to people on the three year and the one year um, and, and I, I felt very welcome. Um, and that, that was surprising. That was really nice. Um, I think also the care that the tutors have and the time that the tutors have for you. Um, if you're there to ask a question, they will respond. Um, 
And so I, yeah, I think the care, the care from the tutors and the care from, from the people around. Um, and I think also something that did surprise me is how far away it is from, from other places, which at first is a bit of a shock, but it's something that you really, really grow to love because I have the ability to come into school at nine o'clock in the morning, switch off my phone and not look at it until 5.36 in the evening when I get home, um, which I don't think you have anywhere else. There's not many outside distractions. Um, I know that I probably would have struggled at, at drama school in the city just because I would have got very overwhelmed. I'm a country boy, so that's probably why I really enjoy it here. Um, but yeah, that ability to be able to come in and, and you've got this space to come and work and enjoy what you're doing without having to you can you can leave you can leave your, your your life at the door and then pick it up again with your bag at the end of the day right thank you um a quick question um which i think is quite practical um uh, where has it gone uh do you accept monologues from films which is quite an interesting question like from uh, screenplay so um the thing, I mean, yes, the thing with watching something and seeing somebody else do a monologue is it influences you quite a lot. Um, so there's something quite nice about reading. I mean, you may have seen a play as well, but through reading it and your own imagination and it coming from you and being more part of you, that's what's, that's what's important. So does that make sense? Um, so as long as it's going to be something that is from you. So the, I think the general recommendation is to go more for something from a, from a playwright, um, but you, you just need to, to double check, double check on the website um, if they're with the small print and things. I have seen people do extracts that have been from, from a film, but I don't fully know what's, what you're officially, officially told. Um, but I would say, make sure that you're not representing what you have seen other people do that you are finding it kind of organically for yourself whatever that is thank you uh, we've only got time for a couple more questions so um if a question would i have time for a job outside my studies yes <laughs> um short answer yes um if you i mean i didn't have a job during the foundation um just because I wanted to fully uh, focus in on, on, on the course. But um, coming into this, this year, I now have a job working part-time and it's, it's completely doable. And I think the, the big thing with it is that you have, you'll, you'll teach yourself even more discipline because if you're working one day at the weekend, um, then the other day will be for the extra work and or for meal prep. So it will teach you more how to be um like discipline with your time and stuff but equally it's always great to have the two days off so you have a proper day off um and then a day where you can do work or if you like to spread out your work um i think it's more of a personal question for yourself if you feel like you can manage the time because i know some people feel like it's completely not doable but some people are like yeah i can work during the week if i want to but i wouldn't recommend that at all <laughs> no <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think you've got you've got time. Uh, again, it's up to up to you. Um, I'd recommend you if you do is one one day on the weekend. Um, you can fit into, but it just gets very tiring. I mean, you can do it for the first four or five weeks probably, but then towards the end of the term, like you will get tired. So working a two day weekend is is full on. Um, I do know someone I think on this year's foundation who's doing three nights a week. Um, I think the Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, something like that. And um, so it is, it, some people, everybody works differently, but there is time to fit in work, uh, yeah, a job. Yeah, and I'd say, obviously it's to do with finances, isn't it? And yeah. some people really do need to do that. And so you need to find, see if you can find a way to make it work. Sometimes I am in a situation though, with a student a couple of months in, and we're talking about how they're getting tired and the strain and the amount of work that they have. And so, Sometimes they, because it is a six months and it's this one-off opportunity, um, they do, you know, they then approach an auntie and borrow a little bit of money and drop 
drop the Thursday night just for for a few weeks. Uh, some you know, so sometimes you do need to kind of just look at that wisely if you can. Thank you, and I think this is our final question. Um, and I think all of you could answer this is, um, well, why would one choose Oxford and not a different foundation course? Or obviously to the students, why, why did you choose Oxford? <laughs> I, I can go for why I would choose <laughs> one. Um, because you're in, a, you're in a small group. Um, you know, there's only 16 or 17 of you. You get a lot of loads of personal attention. And also the, the fact that you are completely integrated with the school and you are around all these other really, you know, exciting students. I think it's a very, it's a very inspiring environment um, to be in. And that may well be in other places, but I, I just, I don't think so. I think this is kind of more personal and more inspiring, um, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think, wanna... oh, sorry, go on. Go, go, Anna, go, Anna. go, go. Okay. <laughs> um, I just think when, on my audition day, for both, for the foundation and for the three year, um, I, I just felt very, uh, very held by the staff, I think, and the gen, like, the genuine feeling of them wanting you to do well really comes across and you do feel really supported and really held, and I think, in the audition they wanted the best out of you and I know I haven't felt that really anywhere else really um or I might have for one audition somewhere else and not for the other but here all the way through my auditions it's very supportive and it's and that's one thing that I really grasped onto and I think like when I came to the school first I kind of sat down in the coffee bar and I was like I feel like I'm gonna be here for a long time and here I am three years later <laughs> so yeah yeah, I, I had that exactly exact same feeling. When I came and auditioned here for the first time, I walked into the school and I was like, the, this this feels right. Um, and I got offered the place on the foundation here. Um, and then I didn't, I then sort of um, didn't, I missed one or two other auditions just because I was like, I know that this is the course that I want to do. Um, I, I didn't, when I got offered the foundation, I didn't feel the, oh no, I'm not on a three year course, which I know that some people feel. I was very, like very happy. So it was like, okay, that is the next next stepping stone. Um, I've forgotten now parts of the question, but why did I choose Oxford and why is, why is it, why would I go over? Uh, having spoken to a lot of other people that have um, experienced foundation courses at other schools that it seems like a completely different experience. And one, the, the foundation here is treated very professionally. Um, you're not here just just for six months, just to um, just to be here. Like you, you it, obviously it depends on what you put into it, but you are given the opportunity to be treated very professionally and 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 properly in my eyes. Um, and so I think that is definitely a big big selling point of the foundation here is the seriousness of the staff towards you um, and and your needs. And do you find that the all the years get on well together? Yeah. Oh yeah. Because it's quite a small school. Yeah. 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 I think that's one thing, like it's even now, and a lot of the people who are in the well, I guess the upper years have done the foundation, especially on a three-year mm. course. There are select people, so everyone kind of has there's people who have been in the position of like the new foundation cohort or the foundation cohort. Mm. So I think as well like those people are even more open to be mates or even more open to have conversations but everyone's very friendly and regardless and wants to be friends um but yeah Louis, do you want me? yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was, sometimes my clicker doesn't work it's very annoying um well thank you very much everyone um there are a couple more questions just come in but we've actually run out of time um if you have any questions please email the school it's info at oxforddrama.ac.uk and if you go onto the website um 
basically all the information about how to apply, what you need to do, and everything is there. And remember, Christmas is coming up, so it's quite a good opportunity if you want to make a self-tape. Um, you should have some time at home to apply. We are open, all the applications are open. We close in May, but obviously we're already auditioning. So it's, it's good to get your audition in early. Okay, well, thank you very much. And thank you to the panel for answering all the questions. I hope it's been helpful. Okay, bye.